have ancestors who walked this hill, who was driven from Chico. What was our people thinking about? How were they feeling leaving their home and looking at that mountain, not knowing where they were going? They were driven all the way up through here. They were pushed from their homelands and they were forced. Not letting them rest, not giving them water, not gonna feed them, just pushing them up there. They didn't know where they were going. All they knew is that somebody's yelling at them and telling them to get up and go. A lot of our ancestors back then died because they couldn't make it up it. My people did this, and if my people can do it, if they suffered, then I will suffer with them. We're here doing the same walk they're doing. We're remembering them. We've been doing a remembrance march for the Numcolt Trail. It's just remembering the history and not just remembering it through story, it's reliving the history and getting a better idea of what my ancestors had to go through uh, in order for me to be here today. It's a piece of American history that should be known. It's sad that people don't know that this happened here. History has been so whitewashed that you know, people don't realize how America became America. The land that you're on, it came with a price. My friend worked for the Forest Service. He established a committee that worked together with tribal members to do a commemorative trail, the history of the Nomcoat Walk. He decided to find walkers. So I decided I would be one of those walkers. In 1996, we were called the Crazy Eight that came over the mountain. I did it because my grandfather was one of the children that were able to make it over into Round Valley. I wanted to honor my ancestors and to feel even a part of what they may have felt like be it coming over the mountain and making that journey into a foreign environment. I can only feel just, you know, uh, uh, just a touch of what they had to endure, but also to be grateful because if they hadn't been resilient and had that endurance, I wouldn't be here today. I was on the very first one 28 years ago to represent our family and you know honor our ancestors we were tired we were sore our feet were bloody you know blisters upon blisters upon blisters i was sunburned and then in the nighttime it would be so cold it would get up there and it would snow on us this is my third year on the gnome colt walk growing up i did not know about the california trail of tears and i couldn't believe that there was a Trail of Tears in California when I finally found out about it. And then to find out that my ancestors walked this trail um, was profound and moving and so eye-opening. This walk is my heritage. It was my grandma's grandpa who actually did the original walk. He was eight when he was on the forest walk. We're descendants from him and we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for him. I started this walk when I was eight years old. Uh, my mother made it a point that I started when I was eight years old because that's when my great-great-grandfather was forcibly marched himself. I mean, I didn't throw him to the wolves or anything, but I brought him on the walk for them to kind of get an idea what kind of stock they came from. This is my first year. I've actually heard lots of stories about this and the trials that people went through. And I thought this would be a personal experience and something to carry on with me. We wouldn't be here if we didn't have these people. Our priority for being here is for our people. Everyone moves at their own pace. Just focus on the task. We got a hundred miles to do, my ancestors, 
I'm hoping they're looking down on me and watching me. And as we started coming up the mountain, it really hit me. This is the last point where they ever saw their home and where they had to leave their children and their families behind. And I could feel the sadness as we started climbing the mountain. I kept looking at that mountain when it was coming to it. I was trying to figure out where they went. And you know, maybe even some of the people, maybe they're still here in the hills someplace. You never know. These old trees, if they could talk, they've seen a lot. Everybody has their own way of getting through this walk. Mainly, I think about the stories I used to hear from my family and um, what it really meant to them then. Now I can appreciate it now. So, you got so much going on in your head and you're praying as you go along. It's really about where you're at in your life, really empathizing with that and seeing people come together and teach each other and talk and heal and share sides of themselves that they wouldn't be able to in their everyday lives. You know, it's, it's a very wide spectrum of emotions and thoughts. This is the time where I actually reflect, I endure, and I try to fix any problems that I have with myself, any like resentment or anger that brings me into a better mindset. And that makes me then reflect on what I'm doing today. Every year that I come, I feel so much better after. And I go home and I, a lot of the weight is off me because I leave it on the road. I'm really challenged to think about my relationship to Native community. And I think I'm here to examine what is it that I can heal for my ancestors that came to this continent and perpetrated genocide. I'm trying to understand the limitations on what can I do that would contribute to the healing. Being a Native girl, I've dealt with racism before. And you know, this has actually helped me heal. As we started coming up the mountain, I realized that there's a lot of things about myself that I didn't know understand and I held a lot of anger. Because there's things in the past that have happened and I resented people for that. But as we got up further up the mountain, I realized that it's just holding me down. Don't walk up here with hard feelings, hate. Uh, think about revenge. You don't want to be up here with those kind of feelings. It, it's going to hurt you. Enjoy your time here with us. This walk really helps bring us back together. We are mending um, our family ties that were once broken um, by um, generational trauma. A reconnecting a family, I believe it will make us better as a whole, as a people. Me and my sister, we were brought up what they call half-breeds. One side of my family was white, one side was Indian. My grandpa hated Indians. But then my grandpa on my other side didn't care for white, so here we were stuck in the middle. <laughs> my dad would never talk about his history. It was something they brushed under the carpet like it didn't exist. Us kids weren't allowed to go in either side in their house. Never knew why. Didn't find out till just a few years back. So my, my Sarah, who's here and done the walk three years in a row, she's met a lot of her cousins and she feels like she belongs somewhere now. We're still making connection with family. We'll start talking about grandmas and grandpas and aunties and uncles and then we'll realize, oh my gosh, we're related. You know, every year that happens on the trail people connecting and, and, oh, you know, it's like we're all cousins. <laughs> it's great. Just learning more about the history. It's awesome, you know, because it's a missing piece of my history. The main thing is we're all together out here now and uh, we're like a family out here. We welcome everybody. We welcome everybody. It doesn't make no difference what, who you are, what race you are. And we've had several 
different people come walk. I'm really grateful for being included in something. The generosity and kindness has been um, really heartwarming. Some of these people, they're not your family. They're just people who came to join in on the walk and they become part of your family. We call ourselves the Gnome Colt family. Seeing how far the walk has come and how big it's grown, you know, it would be amazing to see as many people on the walk as there were on the trail to really emulate the gravity of this event. I hope that the walk continues. I hope that uh, as it does, we mend ourselves and we come out of this as a stronger family like we once were before. Mm -hmm.